There is something coming with Mr. Trump that I don't think anybody is seeing. It is my considered belief that the vast majority of the people in this country are intelligent enough to notice it, but it will be too late when they finally do. Now, breaking news alert, we have a brand new Battlefield of the Mind video up over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, and I'll warn you, this one out of all of the videos might be the most controversial. It's not for the faint-hearted. It is at the $1 a month level. That's all it costs. It's Florida Maquis Patreon channel. $1 a month. If they would allow me to charge $0.25 cents a month, I would charge $0.25 cents a month. It's simply about putting in the speed bump to keep the censors and the trolls away so that we can have an authentic audience. People that were truly interested in knowing the truth. And that's what's going on here. How many of you have heard the saying that if it's free, you're the product? Well, that's unfortunately what YouTube has become. I can reach a lot more people here. But if you really want the deep dive, if you want to look at things from an intelligence warfighter's point of view, join us. That was my job in the military. Only one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. And here's the best part, fully refundable. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked, hundreds of videos, hundreds and hundreds of videos going back years and years covering a wide range of topics. Join us. We'd love to have you now. Let's just keep up with the facts, shall we? Harris, vice current vice president, Kamala Harris, some might allege that she's been president this entire time, has raised $200 million in her first week after it was announced that Joe Biden will be finishing out his term and she will be running for re-election in November. 170,000 volunteers. Now, there's some debate about the amount of different donors. There's been an investigation that said maybe some of... It doesn't matter. The money is the money. The money is the money, and it only took her five seconds to close the gap and pull past Mr. Trump. This is, uh, this is the thing. This is the thing nobody is seeing. Mr. Trump ran against Hillary Clinton, another very old individual from another era. Another very old individual from another era. Even though the politics of Ms. Harris and Ms. Clinton kind of align, they come from different eras where different things are more important. There is a handicap that Ms. Clinton had that Ms. Harris does not. And Harris's job in California, her job as a prosecutor, is going to serve her well. If Trump's smart, he won't debate her. If Trump's smart, and I think that's what we're seeing from the camp now, he won't debate her because he'll get killed. As bad as it was with him and Biden, Biden can make the allegation that, well, he was senile. Trump can't make that allegation. He'll gonna, he's going to get killed. And it's going to be based on one thing. Now, I'm just going to report as it is. Some people like to ascribe, well, are you for Harris? You're saying that, truthfully, I'm not for either one of them. I'm not really for either one of them. I can see positives and negatives. But I can look at things coldly without the uh, handicap of passion, without the handicap of emotion, and see the truth for what it is. That's really the essence of what they treat, teach you in military intelligence is to look at the facts dispassionately and see who has an advantage and who doesn't. During the Cold War, when I was in, a long time ago, there were a great many ways in which the Russians had a huge advantage. At that time, it was called the Soviet Union. Huge advantage over us. And as intelligence operatives, we had to accept the fact that we were operating at a handicap. At a handicap, pardon me. Now, let's get to it. And I've been setting this up for a long time, to be very honest. Setting this up for a long time, talking about another topic that has really uh, gotten a lot of people's nose bit on a joint. Good character is more important than wealth, good looks, popularity, and even education. These things do not guarantee happiness, and often they become obstacles to developing good character. How many of you knew that guy or that girl 
wealthy, good look, popularity, and they were just absolutely insufferable to be around. I know there's a lot of folks in my era, the Gen X era from the 80s, that we knew that we know those we knew those people back in high school. We knew who they were. They had the money, they had the looks, they had you know their mom and dad involved in the PTA, and they they popular, and they became the most insufferable adults and people to be around. Things I value more than money. Love, respect, kindness, integrity, trust, self-esteem. I think a lot of people are on the right sheet of music now. I have talked about this very strange shift in this country where there are a lot of people faced with financial ruin, primarily women, who have chosen within the safety of their own homes to get out of camera and get in their undies and whatever and take pictures and raise money doing that. Now, a lot have said, Florida Maki, I have too much self-respect for that. I'll take my chances on the side of the road with a tent and some tarps. I will not, I don't care if I get kicked out of my apartment, I don't care if I lose my car, I don't care what I lose, I'm maintaining my self-respect. Okay, that's a good choice. I can understand this choice too, especially if they were young. I'm like, you know, I could see, you know, a young woman saying, I'm not going out there on the street with a bunch of crackheads and meth heads and pimps and drug dudes. It's not safe for me. I can understand this choice. And I can also understand the thinking behind this choice. It's not mine to judge anybody else's situation. Some might even reiterate, integrity is better capital than money. You can accumulate it just like money and you can use it just like money, but it goes further and is enduring. I can understand this. Now, the allegation that I'm making is, is thus. The choice of Donald Trump to continue as president is the only fan's choice. Because what's the argument? He's going to fix the economy. He's going to make my financial life better. Heck, he might make it so that there wouldn't be so many people forced into that corner where they have to choose between you know, having a bed to sleep in and their integrity. Some might say that. But there are also others that are going to say that the choice of money isn't always the best choice. The choice of being more financially well-off isn't always the best choice. Louisa Louisa May Alcott, I'd rather see you poor men's wives if you were happy, beloved, contented, and then queens on thrones without self-respect and peace. Okay, I understand that. You see, there's these 9% in the middle. 9% in the middle that both the Trump camp and the Harris camp are vying for. Now, what she is going to be able to do, what she is going to be able to do is make the self-respect argument. She could even stipulate, you know what? Mr. Trump, because of his business acumen and his contacts on Wall Street, he might be able to weasel away some deals that might fix some things and bring prices down. She could stipulate that. Maybe he would be better for the economy. But you're going to have to vote your conscience, is what she's going to say. And a vote for this guy is a vote for a convicted sexual abuser. You see, this is the handicap Hillary Clinton couldn't bring up because of her husband. Hillary Clinton couldn't bring this up back then because of Bill. Pot calling the kettle black. She had been seen as a hypocrite. Harris doesn't have this handicap. Forget Jack Smith. Forget the fraud. Forget the search at Mar-a-Lago, forget the documents, none of that matters. The only conviction that matters is this one. And she, as a female prosecutor, is going to, and she's going to have the details, the details of the 26 different women over the years, from all walks of life, all over the world, that have brought this up. Now, some have said, well, They're all just a bunch of Democrat operatives. One of them isn't even from the United States. Nini Laksanen, former Miss Finland, in 2006. I would like anyone to make some allegation that somehow she's involved with the Democrat Party in America. What what possible motive could she have? One of these women has her husband and her three kids as material witness who were sitting there when it happened. And they've all gone 
and made statements under oath that what the woman said happened with Trump happened with Trump. Another one was his own ex-wife. Another one we're going to cover at the end here, and it's going to floor you. You wouldn't think in five million years. But there's something even more important. You see, you see 26, with a lot of Trump supporters, see 26 women that you think are all in collusion, all a giant cabal, all working against Trump, all working together as some, some machine. What you don't see is 26 dads. What you don't see is 26 dads. How many of you remember the whole dad shotgun daughter argument? I have a shotgun. I have a shovel. I have a backyard. And I have an alibi if you hurt my little girl. I have those four things. I may not have much, but I have those four things. A shotgun, a shovel, a backyard, and an alibi. I'm sure a lot of you heard the Rules for baiting my daughter. I do better research than the FBI. She's my princess, not your score. I am everywhere. Know your, know your boundaries, curfew, abstinence. And women out there giving advice to their daughters. You look at this and you're like, well, this the daughter can't vote. Ten years ago? How old were uh, girls this age in 2015? Nine years later, nine-year-olds then are 18 now. Nine-year-olds then are 18 now. A lot of conservatives love, love memes like this, teach your daughter to shoot because a restraining order is just a piece of paper. Now, see this band, Blackwater Rising? Hardcore rock band little southern flavor to it. Heavy metal stuff. Lead guitar player, John Fatteruso. Does this guy look like some liberal snowflake to you? Does this guy look like some liberal snowflake to you? Hardcore southern rock band. This is his wife, Juliet Huddy. She got terminated from Fox News for making these allegations against Trump and against Bill O'Reilly. Now, does this guy look like some Democrat operative to you? In a hard rock, southern band as a league? Does this guy look like liberals to you? You see, there's a reason she's raising a bunch of money. And there's a reason there's a whole army, brigades of people coming out to support her. And that it's only taken a week for her to close the gap. This is going to be the embarrassing part for a lot of Trump supporters. Trump, Trump didn't even get on the stage for the primary with other Republicans. Because the other Republicans, a lot of them were very young, very sharp, and had the receipts. And had they had the opportunity to take the gloves off, they might have brought some things up. She's got no such... Uh, Restraint. Her job was putting sexual abusers in prison. And you can make the allegation all you want. Oh, it's all made up. It's all make-believe. Donald Trump is pure and innocent as the wind-driven snow. Go ahead and keep deluding yourself that that's the case. Hillary couldn't bring it up because of Bill. Hillary couldn't bring it up because of Bill. There are a lot of people out there, a lot of them. Every one of these women is somebody's daughter. Every one of these women is somebody's daughter. And don't sit there and tell me if it was your daughter. If it was your daughter and you knew there were two dozen other accusers, that you would tell your daughter, well, are you sure you didn't misinterpret it, hon? Now, I know you don't agree with this policy. You're probably doing this because it's, you're, you're politically motivated. Is that what you would tell your daughter? Guys, is that what you would tell your daughter? If she came to you and said something inappropriate like this happened? If, she, if you saw this in the news about your daughter and two dozen other men's daughters, what would your reaction be? 
what would your reaction be? Forget Jack Smith. Forget the documents at Mar-a-Lago. Forget all of that. None, the fraud does not matter. It doesn't matter. There's going to be one thing that matters, and it's going to be this. A lot of dads, a lot of daughters, a lot of witnesses, people from overseas that have no dog in our political fights whatsoever, all saying the same thing. All saying the same thing. Final point. Final point. Well, Florida Monkey, Florida Monkey, don't you see that the world is on fire right now? There would never have been... Uh, Vladimir Putin would have never even dared. Okay. The issue in Ukraine. What were the other three options? If Donald Trump says that Vladimir Putin would have never dared, there's only three threats he has. Only three threats he has. Launch. Launch on Russia, which I don't think was what Mr. Trump was talking about. Boots on the ground, which even the man's own vice president now says that, you know, that's never going to be a threat. And Putin knows that's not a threat. What's the final option? Deal? Okay. Ukraine wants to keep all of its territory. Russia wants to take 100% of Ukraine's territory. So you're saying you would take land that belongs to Ukraine and then make some sort of deal just to hand it over to a nation just to say you made the deal. Who remembers the uh, um, our, the uh, conversation between Ted Danson and Kirstie Alley in Cheers where they were talking about making a deal and Ted Danson said to Kirstie Alley, well, I want to sleep with you a hundred times and you want to sleep with me no times. So why don't we meet somewhere in the middle and we'll only, you know, we'll come to an agreement as adults and, you know, I'll only sleep with you 50 times. What would be the deal? What, what, was the, what would be the deal between Trump and Russia? Same thing with Iran. Iran wants the total destruction of the West. We don't want to be destroyed at all. So what's the deal? Are we going to launch on Iran? Are we going to put boots on the ground in Iran? Or are we going to deal with terrorists? Those are your three options. That's my question. There's, if, there's a, if there's a fourth option I'm missing with dealing with these people, nuke them, put boots on the ground, and use conventional forces to bring them to heel, or make some deal. Give them something they want, and we get something we want. We know what they want. They want the destruction of the West. It's stated. It's stated fact. So I guess I'll leave it there and let folks debate, but battlefield of the mind. You have to be cold. You have to be clinical. You have to be objective. You have to be cold, clinical, and objective. And there's something else you have to understand, too, about 80-something-year-olds like Hillary Clinton, like Joe Biden, like Donald Trump. They come from an era that had different values regarding men and women and what men were allowed to do and what women had to tolerate back then. Grandma, Grammy and Grampy, great-grandma and great-grandma, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it, but the era he comes from, that relationship was entirely different as to what was allowed and what was considered appropriate and inappropriate. She comes from, I guess we you would have to say factually speaking, our generation. She's about 60 years old. She's five years older than me. So she's kind of on the older end of what you would call Gen X. We had very, very different rules, very, very different standards for behavior between men and women. Things you could and things you could not do. Things you could and you could not say. That didn't apply to him. Hillary had a handicap. It was her husband. She doesn't have that. 
She also has a Jewish husband, a Jewish husband as well, which is going to disarm a lot of anything. I don't know how Trump beats her. She could stipulate, fine, you're better at the economy. If you want to vote money, if you want to vote money, vote money. She, she could look right in the camera and say, if you want to vote money, vote money, vote for my opponent. If you want to vote integrity, yeah, it might cost you a little bit of money. It might cause, you know, a little bit more grief in your life. But what would your choice be? This is what I've been getting hit over the head with for probably no lie the last year, year and a half. Florida Monkey, you can't show images like that. Florida Monkey, you can't talk about things like that. As it's some attempt to impugn my integrity. It's just the facts of what's going on right now. It's just the facts. Do I live in a tent on the side of the road and take my chances? Or do I sell out and keep the bills paid? This is going to be the argument. This is going to be the argument. So, I will leave it there. God bless. Thank you, everyone who's joined us over Patreon. Like I said, brand new video, less than a day old, up over there with a farther, much more deeper, um, more intense dive into this. Only a dollar. And trust me, not for you, full, full refund, no questions asked. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.